Tara Lynn with Five Acres Honey Farm. I figured I'd give you a little update on my seedlings before I head out to the garden to do a little bit of cleanup and some work around the yard. Uh, today is Sunday, but I'm gonna post this tomorrow on Monday. I just shared uh, my video about my experiment of storing the eggs in wood ash, so I just wrapped that up and now I'm gonna head outside because it's not raining. Forecast looks very wet and very cold for the next two weeks. <laughs> So let's take a look at a little bit what's happening in here. So this is the flat I have of all the lettuces and kales and spinach. I meant to seed the sea kale, the perennial kale in this last row, like the day after I made this tray a few weeks ago and I just didn't get around to it. It's, I, I should have just expected that, but everything has had a great germination rate. I'm gonna be going through here. You can kind of see where like the kale are getting their first true leaves. And for most of these, I'm going to thin them out. So that means I'm just going to snip at the base and I'm going to take the, um, the upper portion of the plant and that's gonna go um, on our dinner tonight. I'm making pizza. So we'll use those as microgreens and the rest I'm going to leave in here. Um, but you know, like you can kind of take a look way down in here and see like there's like five or six lettuce growing in here. So to allow them the opportunity so that they're not competing with each other, I'm going to trim out all but one. And then uh, right now it is February 7th and uh, my plan is to uh, harden these off in, in about another two weeks or so. And um, because the weather looks really, really cold the next two weeks. So, um, so I'm gonna try, to, try and wait, wait it out harden them off, and then by the end of this month, I want these to be out in the garden, and I need to reuse these trays to start my next round of seedlings. Uh, so I'm probably going to do a lot of flowers in here uh, and, and herbs, and then save the seed block trays, which have been really great for uh, the tomatoes. So I had very poor success with my cotton, None came up except for one random one. I guess I kind of messed up my rows and only one came up over there. So I have more cotton seed that I saved that did not spend the winter outside like this cotton had. So this was all cotton seed that I had saved that I just harvested off a plant that had been sitting out all winter. If you had watched um, my, uh, my video where I was plant planting all these seeds, what I plan to do is, um, you know, I'll dump this out and put fresh soil in and, and redo that. So I've got um, rhubarb and fennel growing in here and then dill. And then I was going to plant chamomile and asparagus. And again, I didn't realize I needed to um, soak those overnight when I was seeding this tray and I just never got back around to it. So. I feel like it's just better for me to wait until when I do it all at once and I'll just be more prepared next time. This whole tray is onions and with the onions, I'm not going to thin these out. Um, I've had bad luck in the past growing onions and this is the most that have ever germinated for me. And I'm going to, uh, from after watching some videos, I'm going to leave them as is and I'm going to plant them as you know close as they are together. And the ones all the way over here are bunching onions. And then as they grow out in the garden, I'll just harvest from next to it. So they'll be thinned kind of like in a more long-term process. And down here, I've got celery, which took a really long time to germinate. Um, super teeny tiny and delicate looking. And the broccoli. And the broccoli are looking really healthy. I am going to thin these out. Um, and I'll do that tonight as well. And my peppers are doing really well. I'm actually gonna turn off the, um, the heating mat because I don't really need to have it on anymore. You know, there's only a few little ones here that, uh, that are still either just about to germinate or that, that haven't yet. Um, but these are looking great. I am not going to thin these um, because I want as many peppers as possible. So what I'm going to do is like the ones here where there's like two or three um, in each of the blocks as I pop those up, I'm just gonna separate them. So that's something at the end of this month I'm going to do. And the ones back here, there's a bunch. Um, that's just because they're, they take a little bit more effort with the heating pad and everything to germinate. I don't wanna thin them out and, um, and not benefit from how many have sprouted. 
So after I thin them tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set up an oscillating fan on a chair over here. And so it's going to um, blow on them so that um, they'll be kind of, you know, agitated in this way. And that's gonna make them stronger. You know, every day when I come down here to move the light, I, you know, do this and that helps them grow stronger so that when they do start that hardening off process, they're not going to be so shocked by wind and, and the elements that are outside. I made it out to the garden. It was a really good warmish winter day and spent the time pulling down the peas and sunflowers and okra stalks that were up on the trellises and getting them put into a new compost pile and chatted with my neighbor while I was out there so it was great to catch up with her and I'm getting this set up for what I will show you is this like Japanese style tomato cage. It looks so much better. All the trellises are clear now. I have a compost delivery coming this week and before I put that compost down, I'm going to rake away all of these leaves, but you can see the trellis is all clear. And this little trellis is actually gonna go back on the other side of the garden. And this is the pile that I set up that I'm gonna be doing the Japanese style tomato cage with. So I'm gonna be putting a cage around this compost and continuing to layer um, a lot of veggie scraps that I have in the kitchen, eggshells, and getting it ready for tomatoes. Okay, so I'm going to go through here and all I'm going to do is just snip right here. Take a better look over here. Right here at the base, and I'll, I will be using two hands, but basically grabbing one of these, dropping it in my bowl, which will be a little topper for our pizza. All of the seedlings are thin. I have a healthy bowl of microgreens for our pizza. Surprise, surprise, I'm drizzling honey over my pizza. I had it at a restaurant once and I thought this is a little strange, but now I really love it. And I also love putting fresh garlic and some type of a nut. So this has pistachios in it. I know that's not really a common topping, but I just love the combination. And I just sprinkled some sea salt over my pizza and I'm putting microgreens on mine, but my husband does not like veggies on his pizza. So he's having his microgreens as a little mini salad. Comment below and let me know when you try some honey on top of your pizza.